dramatic performance creating spectacle is the definition of theatre. If a car like this isn't theatre, I don't know what is, and that's a compliment, not an insult. Yet, this isn't pretending or dressing up, this is motorsport, or as close as makes no difference, faster around some circuits than the Cup race car, this all-new 992 GT3 RS is not just the icing on Porsche's cake of achievements, it's the cherry on the very top. And if Porsche cares how this car drives on the public road, and looking at how they presented it, that is not a given. They may have just pulled off a crowning last act for the GT car lineage. And so, to discover the GT3 RS's secrets and to compare it with a standard GT3, why don't you join me, Roger Bailey, on what is going to be a rather special performance. Coming up. The sense of anticipation begins long before you turn the key, the sense of drama even. Um, it's a bit of an ungainly drop down into this bucket seat, but once you're in, it's comfortable, it's snug and it's supportive. The engine just cracks into life and it sounds just like a GT3, a standard GT3, which comes as no surprise because this is exactly the same engine as you find in the standard car. Snick into drive mode. And these paddle shifters, they're really nice. They're better and more clicky than the standard GT3. And so, moving off, and well, this is very odd because it feels normal. Okay, so now we're on a more typical UK road surface is a bit more bumpy and this is a bit of an enigma. I think we should pull over and take a proper look at this car, don't you? Right then. And our first proper look tells us that this car's aerodynamics is everything. Next to a GT3, the GT3 RS is wild. The ante is not so much up as sent into orbit. Not one bit of this is for show mind. All of these ducts, fins and forms have a purpose. And at top speed, which is 184 miles per hour, the aero-induced downforce is a massive 860 kilograms, which for context is the weight of 10 men and it's achieved without having to carry any of that weight. What it is carrying is a huge cooling radiator up front which takes away entirely the storage compartment. That's right, there's no boot or trunk or a glove box either for that matter, which is where the toolkit now lives. The advantage of these inconveniences being the fitment of motorized aerofoils, which are all tucked away up into the front wings, which work in synchronization with the car's most standout feature, which is the mighty impressive rear wing, which also moves and adjusts automatically and can be heard scything the air. Some say it's too big, but I say if you need it, and if you've got it, you should flaunt it. Back up front, air management continues, which passes moving air through the front radiator, which then flows through an internal S duct and out of these nostrils on the bonnet. The extra fins ridged along the nostril edges direct hot air from the radiator out to the edges of the car. These blades on the roof have that same purpose. All this aero engineering is to ensure that air flowing into the engine intakes at the rear of the car is cooled and therefore better for power output. The underside is fully panelled, another first for a road guy 911 and also features directional fins to tidy up the airflow. Inside we find quality fixtures and fittings wherever you may look as you would expect in a Porsche. It's a pretty familiar place if you've spent time in a 992 Generation 911. Yet yeah, note these four rotary control switches, which are unique to the GT3 RS. We'll talk more on these control switches in a moment, and in particular, one of the settings. I could go on running my eyes all over this piece of automotive art, but these great roads will wait no longer. Oh God, brilliant. 
phenomenal car this I absolutely love it it's just like the GT3 suspension is about the same with this setting but it's just turned up a whole new notch This is not a placebo effect, this is real downforce. You can feel it, even on these roads. So, steering is very accurate, grip is very high, and the car feels absolutely planted to the road. And I imagine because of this, we could travel very fast on these roads. So our circular route has brought us back to where we left the standard GT3. So why don't we just get out of this car and jump into the GT3 for a bit of a comparison. So the standard GT3. I think the suspension on this car is perfectly fine, it's perfectly usable on a day-to-day -day basis, but can the same be said about the GT3 RS? I mean, that car is meant to be a road car, and I imagine customers of that car will want to know the answer to that very question. So let's jump out of this GT3 and back into the GT3 RS. The two cars sound pretty much the same. We have 15 brake horsepower in the RS and the GT3, however the output feels the same, which at low revs and by supercar standards is relatively modest, there being no turbo to boost a low rev shove of course. However, engine's force builds up in a linear way into an explosive, bellowing, screaming explosion of power output as the revs rise. It's just pure drama, and I've made a discovery. Using these wheel mounted controls, you can adjust everything from the level of traction control, stability control, to how the torque vectoring sends power to the rear wheels, and to how the differential locks up and then opens up again. You can even manually open the DRS flap on the rear wing for lower drag down the straights, and after playing around with these controls, I can sense not much real world effect, which I guess on public roads is unsurprising. A part that is from this setting, right here with this little switch. So switch into track mode and then turn the suspension compression and rebound into minus four and the suspension softens up. It's actually softer than the standard GT3. It's a small yet noticeable difference and comes as a bit of a surprise and will be a significant bonus for those owners who will use their GT3 RS on a public road. The car's designer unambiguously told us that this is a track car and that this car is to be driven very fast around the circuits and we are told by independent testers that it performs this premise to great effect. We won't be confirming its track capability today, maybe that's for another video. However, what I can confirm is that it drives along a public road with surgical precision at ballistic speed and at the same time delivers everyday usability which for me has come as a bit of a relief. What I can also confirm is that the 992 GT3 RS delivers on its promise of being the most aggressive and most focused road going Porsche 911 that has ever been built. One which delivers pleasure and feedback and security on the road while at the same time dispatching mile after mile at an astonishing pace. And if it ever was to be driven at full speed on these roads, it would surely eclipse all of the other high performance supercars that have gone before it.
the most remarkable thing is that this car is approachable despite its extremity. You can trickle it to the shops and back or scythe along an A-road while always feeling entirely at ease. Is this the ultimate road-going Porsche? Well, no it's not. Porsche makes 25 variations of the 911 which leaves them room for specialisation and this GT3 RS specialises in a way no other does and that's at the expense of almost everything else and in my book there is absolutely nothing wrong with that and I say to Porsche thank you for not bringing down the curtain on the petrol engine road car without first doing something amazing. I hope you've liked this video if you have please click the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and please leave me a comment. I read every single one and I'll reply to most. And please do feel free to watch another one of my videos. Thanks for watching this one. Bye for now. Drive safely. So good, so good. Uh, so but damn it feels good when you jump on it. Scars on my chest like you own it. You can have my last name if you want it. If you want it, if you want it Dear girl, we don't even have to stop it Take you higher than a real rocket You can have my last name if you want it If you want it, if you want it But damn it feels good when you jump on it Scars on my chest like you own it You can have my last name if you want it If you want it, if you want it